Good afternoon and warm welcome to everyone. Myself, Divyansh Kumar Sinha, Heritage Society, Gaya Chapter, welcomes you all. Heritage Society, in collaboration with Museums Association of India, brings you the seventh episode of the year-long distinguished weekly lecture series to celebrate Azadi Ke Amrit Mahotsav, which is conceptualized by Sanan. The theme for today's lecture is Lal Bahadur Sastri Memorial, History and Development, which will be delivered by our distinguished speaker, Professor A.K. Das, Director, Lal Bahadur Sastri Memorial, New Delhi. We shall begin our session, and for that, I humbly request Dr. Anand Vardhan, General Secretary, Museum Association of India, to give his introductory remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, I welcome distinguished professor and museum icon, Dr. A.K. Das, who has a rare credit of establishing various museums in India. And most importantly, the museums which have been established by Dr. Das they are different from the new fashion and the new trend of creating museum gimmicks. The museums he founded, they are basically museums of social realities. His work under Anthropological Survey of India is a milestone. He is the first known museologist of the country who has the credential and the credit to establish six museums in northeastern India. And in that way, he is the museum leader and one of the most prestige, most reverent museum leader of the country. I am proud of being his student and he, under his scholarly guidance, only my PhD work was started. So it's a matter of great privilege being with my own guru and Sangrahale guru, Professor A.K. Das, who himself is a celebrated scholar and illustrious personality. So what I should speak, I have the opportunity to welcome all of you. Anant Asutosh Dwedi, the Director General of uh, Heritage Society, has given a very substantial contribution in promoting museum culture and making country acquainted, basically the scholarly world, to be acquainted with the museum history, museum tradition, museum practices, and museum culture of the country. So I welcome him also. And uh, the person, Mr. Dibyan Sinha, who is actually the coordinator of this program and anchor of this program. I welcome him. Friends, you all are, all are well acquainted with the fact that Lal Bahadur Shastri is just known, known as the prime minister of the country, premier of the country. He is perceived by common people as a prime minister with saintly attributes. A prime minister who is widely known for his simplicity, Gandhian simplicity, Spartan simplicity, Indian simplicity, his outlook as a true figure of national movement and a true villager of India, a real Sastri as far as his learning is concerned, and a man who appeared before people as a tiny personality, he has the commanding height of Himalayas as far as his strength is concerned and that he had shown during 1965 war against the Pakistan. And it was the Pakistan's president who accepted it that a small prime minister, a small means here in, here in somebody in height, he defeated the American tanks 
by his impeccable courage. So Lal Bahadur Shastri symbolizes the mode of Gandhian politics, the ideology of Gandhian politics, but at the same time, he showed the strength of Subhas Chandra Bose while India was at war against Pakistan. And he has a credit of liberating Indians from a very demoralizing mindset that we had somehow unfortunately developed after 1962 war. And we can say that Lal Bahadur Shastri, as a prime minister, didn't remain a lenient fellow. He was a heroic personality of his time because he didn't do any mistake that his precursor prime minister did during 1962 battle. We have to remember the fact that in 1962, it was political decision that was transformed into a debacle. Indian artillery was somehow little weak because no heat was paid after 1947, but Indian Air Force and Indian Navy was quite capable. And political decisions makers couldn't reach to a concrete decision to safeguard the interest of the country. Lal Bahadur Shastri turned the will of politics in his own era by saying Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan. And probably what India needed was a moral strength, a new voice, a new leadership. And we are fortunate that after Gandhi, in the last session we had discussed about a Gandhi museum at Barakpur from Mangal Pandey, from where the revolt of 1857 emerged and a great hero Mangal Pandey became a red letter, no, letter name in, the, in, in Indian history, not here in India. Also, the whole England came to know that at Barakpur, Mangal Pandey had revolted. So, fortunately, we have a great opportunity today that we are going to discuss about Lal Bahadur Shastri Memorial. Its existence as a memorial is very significant, but the credit of transforming in it into a beautiful personalia museum goes to Dr. Das, as he designed Supreme Court of Museum. Also, he is a master, an important role in making of National Philatelic Museum in Delhi had been significant. We all will know his, all about his contribution to museum world. But in Lal Bahadur Shastri Museum, where we had limited resources, but I had an, we had an iconic personality. So he did justice with this thing. His political ideals, his role in 65 battle, his decisions, and also his death. death because his approach was uncompromising. All world powers gathered at Tashkan and Lal Bahadur Shastri, when he was going to sign a pact, an international pact, he had reasons to be in a shocked state because the aspiration of people, emotion of people were linked to the heart and soul of Lal Bahadur Shastri. So what is there in the memorial? It will be discussed in detail by Professor Das. I welcome him and I feel very fortunate to be part of this team who, which is organizing this, uh, this very, very ideologically powerful and academically very, very sound program on museums as part of uh, Swatantrata Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Thank you very much, Anantji. Thank you very much, Mr. Sinha. And I again welcome Professor Das for the today's discussion. Thank you so much, sir, for your warm welcome and introductory remarks. Now I would like to call upon a stage Professor A.K. Das. Sir, I would go. Thank you very much. At the outset, uh, I definitely acknowledge the <clears throat> effort of uh, the Bihar Heritage Society and uh, Museum Association of India for uh, holding 
this year long uh, program uh, starting with the uh, international museum day celebration on the 18th may <clears throat> it's continuing and uh, contributing uh, you know uh, in many ways for uh, the knowledge for the informations uh, and the data relating to various museums scattered all over the country and uh, i am very glad that they are uh, picking up especially those museums which needs uh, highlights which needs <clears throat> publicity and uh, uh, this uh, uh, this program uh, definitely uh, would give uh, uh, the, the, the required publicity to some of these little known museum including the lal bahadur sastri memorial uh, so i thank uh, anand asudu sudivedi of the heritage society of bihar and uh, dr anand uh, bardhan uh, of the museum association of india uh, and uh, all the team members uh, who is looking after this uh, program who is running this program i thank all of them for this for their uh, bold effort today's uh, lecture is on lal bahadur shastri memorial history and development uh, before i go deep into the, the subject actually cannot be said deep but uh, whatever i know uh, about this memorial which uh, i had to develop uh, uh, so i am going to uh, you know uh, recite a anecdote uh, which will help us to understand the person on whom we are going to develop or we are developing a memorial so this uh, particular anecdote was sent to me by dr kailan kumar ganguli who was former director of rashtriya uh, manav sangrahalaya and the director general of national museum and this particular anecdote was in bengali language and it's about uh, uh, the story goes like this Uh, uh in the mughal sarai uh, junction railway uh, you know an old lady uh, she came in the evening uh, she was to go to delhi and uh, but she could not catch the train as she was delayed as was and uh, she had to stay at the platform um if she it so uh, this old lady was sitting at the platform and the porter who brought her there actually he was a uh, little uh, he felt little bad and she came uh, came to uh, the the lady and said that uh, maji i will just take you to the waiting room because um, that will be more comfortable for you instead of sitting at the platform uh, because your train uh, she train to delhi will be in, in and the next morning so he took the lady to the uh, waiting room and then after that they gave her a seat to uh, she was comfortably sit uh, um, uh, took her seat uh, in one of the benches and then it's a third class waiting room and, you know and the, the waiting room was empty at the time somehow the station master who was just uh, moving and then he saw an old lady sitting in an empty uh waiting room so he was little inquisitive and the man and the station master came to the lady and asked her as a madam and uh, where do you want to go she said i want to go to delhi oh so your train has left but you can go today it's only in tomorrow you can uh, and uh, he asked by the way he asked uh, who uh who is there in delhi i said my son is there 
uh, my son is there and he, he works in railway, he said, she said. He works in railway. Then his he was, the man was becoming inquisitive. He said that in that case, because you are stranded, you will be uh, staying uh, in this platform, you know, overnight. And uh, there will be problem also here and there. But uh, if you can tell me the name of the person, if he's in railway, we can contact him and inform him about you. You know, I can tell him his name or I can give his address or contact number. Like then the lady said that, uh, oh, my name of my son is uh, Lal Bahadur uh, Shastri. The station master was taken back and he again asked, what is the name? He said, Lal Bahadur Shastri. Lal Bahadur Shastri. Oh, my God. <clears throat> then uh, he is the railway minister and his mother is sitting in the third class waiting room for the train to, uh, to go to Delhi. So he called all his subordinate staff and all, and then they started discussing what to do, what not to do. So it's, uh, the railway minister's uh, mother is here. <clears throat> and um, so um, um, they have arranged, uh, you know, the uh, on their own, they have arranged a saloon car, you know, and then brought it to the station and then took the old heavy, uh, to, uh, to the car and then asked her to be uh, comfortable in the car and said the, you will be going to Delhi my neighbor, but you can stay whole night in this car and all the facilities are there you know like that so uh, she started thinking that my son works in the railway and uh, and these people are so uh, doing so much for me why and what exactly he is doing in the railway. So when she, you know, reached uh, Delhi and, and asked Lal Bahadur Satri, that, what do you do in the railway state, railway? Then Lal Bahadur Satri politely said, no, no, I do a little bit here and there about in the railway. Uh, 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 don't bother about that. See, this is the very character of a man, you know, uh, you know, he is not a person boasting of his position or not a person, you know, uh, show his power uh, of his position. Huh? Uh, a man, a, a, a very simple man and a, a kind of a, a very shy man, and, you know, and he never, uh, you know, tried to... Um, highlight his, his own uh, activities or ideas, but he does all these things as part of his duty, uh, you know. So this is the person whose memorial was to be developed, you know, uh, at, the, the, at the capital, New Delhi, uh, you know. The interesting thing about this, that this, muse, this particular memorial took 40 years, you know, took it four decades of time, you know, to come up as a memorial in <coughs> capital city of Delhi. <coughs> I will not talk about the, the historical uh, background of Lal Bahadur Sasti and uh, everybody knows about him. Uh, there are lots of publications on his life, on his life, and, and he belongs to a very poor family, uh, you know, <clears throat> and from this poor family, he raised to the status of a prime minister in course of time, and his childhood, you know, <clears throat> which was uh, spent in uh, the, in, in near about Banaras, uh, <clears throat> uh, and, uh, you know, um, uh, when he was very young, about one and a half year, his uh, father expired. And then, you see, his mother has to um, shift from uh, uh, his um, house to, the, to, mother, to his brother's house. And in the, uh, there in, the, uh, in that house, uh, how he spent his uh, uh, days, you know, 
and we know that how he studied under the lamppost uh, during the night time because daytime he is busy with the household chores and he can't read. So at night he took his books and all and go and then sit under a lamppost outside and he he started studying the books and then uh, he and we also know about that how he crossed the river Ganga, you know, to save money, you know, uh, by swimming, you know, instead of uh, going by the ferry, you know, like that. And another uh, story about that, he wrote uh, a new book, a class textbook, you know, which, uh, because his class teacher uh, asked all the students, you know, they must bring the new book next day, otherwise he will punish them. You know, every, everybody should have the new book. But the Sasi didn't have the money to buy that book. So he borrowed the book, uh, borrowed the book from his friend. And he wrote the entire book by his hand, you know, um, overnight. And that he brought to the school next day. And the teacher was angry. Uh, where is this new book? But his handwritten things. And then the, his friend explained to his uh, teacher that he borrowed his, this book from him. Uh, and he wrote this book overnight, you know. So the teacher was, uh, you know, uh, very sad about that, and then uh, <clears throat> then he started um, helping uh, Lal Bahadur, you know, uh, uh, in many in many ways. So these are some of these, you know, um, episodes of his life, and uh, that is, and then um, how he became the disciple of. Um, how he became influenced by the Mahatma Gandhi because he listened to his speech in the Banaras Hindu University and after that he became this and then he jumped into the Indian independence movement and became uh, you know he worked for Lala Laspat Rai and then in the and then he went to Jawaharlal Nehru and to work for him you know like that and so the story story goes back and he became uh, uh, a after the independence of India, he became a minister in the UP uh, government. And from there, he was picked up by Jawaharlal Nehru, you know, in his cabinet in 1950 uh, uh, and gave him the railway portfolio. That is the first, uh, uh, post, uh, first, post, first uh, portfolio uh, <clears throat> by, uh, given to the Lal Bahadur Shastri. After that, <clears throat> uh, there were other portfolios they came by and uh, you know and he worked ceaselessly in the government um, uh, till uh, the date of uh, Jawaharlal Nehru uh, and then um, he became the, the second prime minister of India for a short period of about 18 months you know he was uh, the prime minister he ruled for 18 months and he died at Tashkent, uh, at the time in Russia, Tashkent, and uh, after the, the the war with Pakistan. So uh, this is uh, the story of this man, or the, you know, as, which is known, and uh, uh, and all these uh, episodes, uh, you know are to be woven uh, in this very memorial, you know, uh, memorial. And uh, for that, uh, you know, um, uh, I was involved uh, uh, sometimes in uh, 2002, sometimes in 2002, long back. Now, uh, <clears throat> Now I will tell you the the, the, the very uh, um, the, the you know um, the purpose you know of uh, developing this memorial you know uh, goes uh, the credit goes to uh, uh, wife of uh, Lal Bahadur Sastri. Her name is Lolita Sastri, and after the date of the uh, Lal Bahadur Sastri, Lalita Sastri, you know. She wanted that a memorial should be developed uh, 
for the Lal Bahadur Shastri and she with her in a uh, she uh, with the help of uh, Indira Gandhi, the, the Prime Minister, you know, uh, she instituted this uh, trust called the Lal Bahadur Shastri Memo National Memorial Trust. Uh, that was instituted in 1966, you know, 67. And this trust, you know, um, immediately they started, uh, you know, um, various uh, activities to develop this memorial. And then the, the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Memorial Trust, you know, um, had uh, members, you know, of high political uh, people, you know, uh, uh, were there in this, but Indira Gandhi at the time he was he was prime minister. She was the chairman of this trust, uh, uh, and all the prime ministers actually is the ex official chairman of the Lal Bahadur Shastri National Memorial Trust. Yet you know, uh, so many prime ministers uh, after Lal Bahadur Shastri came, and then she debut the memorial. Uh, yet to be recognized or yet to be approved at the government level. From 66 to 2000, so 66 to 2000, you know, there was no sanction on the part of the government to develop a memorial uh, in the name of the Lal Bahadur Sasri uh, at the residence where he stayed, you know, from uh, 50s to 1960. Till he became the Prime Minister of India. So, uh, <clears throat> in 2000, when we had this bus pipe, get, uh, Atal Bihari bus pipe's government, you know, and Atal Bihari bus pipe as a Prime Minister, took an immediate decision, you know, to develop the Lal Bahadur Shastri Memorial, and he took a cabinet decision and uh, giving approval for the Lal Bahadur Shastri Memorial at the one Motilal Nehru place, uh, New Delhi. So uh, after about 40 years, the government approval came by and <coughs> uh, <coughs> so the, the the people of the, the, the office bearers of the trust at that time, I think uh, Sri Anil Sastri, the son of Lal Bahadur Sastri, was the holding trustee, you know, of the trust. And then there were also uh, a number of uh, political leaders who were also member of this trust and J.B. Singh uh, was the uh, the member secretary, you know, and so they were uh, <clears throat> uh, at a loss and, and then what to do and how to develop this memorial and all. Then somebody and um, advised them they should go to the national director general national museum and discuss uh, with him about this uh, project and then seek their help. So uh, the Sri Anil Sastri, who was at the time the holding trustee of the trust, Lal Bahadur National, he went to see uh, the director general uh, at the National Museum, and he discussed the matter with him, you know. Uh, you know. And then when he came back uh, out, and the director general National Museum uh, called me, actually at the time I was with the Institute, National Museum Institute, and Dr. Dykerman called me and asked me that uh, the Anil Sastri came and he want to help. He want our help to develop this uh, memorial, you know, and which has been approved by the government uh, recently in 2000. So uh, <clears throat> that's the first um, green signal for me and uh, to go to the Lal Bahadur Sastri Memorial. So I went to the memorial and in the memorial, uh, I met uh, Anil Sastri and the J.B. Singh, uh, the member secretary, and they showed me around the building. And uh, okay, then after that, the building at the time was in a very bad shape, dilapidated condition, because it was uh, abandoned, you know, uh, 
changed 1985-86, you know, because Lolita Shastri was uh, staying there uh, till her death. And then after that, the building was, um, you know, remained empty because all of the members, they shifted uh, to some other places. And so the building was in a very bad shape at that time. And also I asked that, uh, what are the things that are to be displayed in the, the memory? Where are those things? And the Anil Shastri and the, the Singh showed me some uh, materials scattered here and there in the Baghdad building. You know, uh, the souvenir materials, some files and some other things. And they also showed me some uh, photographs, black and white photographs, you know, uh, uh, which were also in a very bad uh, shape, actually. Uh, and so, <clears throat> and he said that there are some other materials also that uh, we will also bring from the house. Uh, <clears throat> uh, like, then uh, I, uh, uh, I left the Shastri, uh, that house, uh, the one Motilal Nehru place. Uh, and then started uh, thinking about how to go about. The first thing I wanted to do is to document all the uh, objects, all the archival materials, you know, whatever is there, you know, uh, and that, 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 as a, that is the first step we should do it before we go ahead with uh, other things. So we took a batch of our student from the National Museum Institute, uh, headed by one Ms. Puja Kausik. So Puja Kausik, she is now uh, a cultural consultant uh, uh, in Brazil. Uh, this Puja Kausik, and she did a good job of picking out each and every object from nooks and corners of the, the house, you know, wherever the things were. Uh, scattered, uh, lying there, you know, I took out, cleaned it, you know, and then uh, they did the chemical cleaning also, then keeping the things uh, in a classified manner, you know, then preparing um, index cards of each and every object, index cards, you know, with little uh, information, you know, uh, incorporated in the index card, uh, I, and then the, all the uh, the materials which were there in the uh, in the one material Nehru place, you know, were documented, you know, properly documented, and they were properly uh, kept, you know, all these each and every objects were wrapped in, uh, you know, kind of. The, at the time we didn't have so much of money, but so we wrapped it in newspaper, kept. Uh, you know, in a classified manner, uh, mm -hmm. in proper place, uh, so that uh, there are no problem of deterioration to some of these objects, you know. And so now we have our um, the cultural material or the, the archival materials and other things were ready. And now we have started thinking now how to go about for displaying and presenting it to the uh, people, you know. It's, the second uh, um, phase of work would be the building itself. So the building was in a very bad shape at the time, uh, mm -hmm. and it needs restoration, you know. And since the building was with the, under the Ministry of Urban Development, you know, so we started contacting uh, the Ministry of Urban Development, we wrote to them that this building now has to be converted into the Lal Bahadur Shastri Memorial and the building needs a restoration. So they should engage uh, the CPWD uh, to do this work, you know, like that. So conferences went on. Surprisingly, uh, this particular proposal, uh, you know, went up to the minister uh, at that time, uh, Sri Anand Kumar, was the Minister for Urban Development. And uh, he was very much fascinated with this project, you know. And all of a sudden, 
he visited the memorial himself, you know, and he went all over the, you know, campus of the memorial, looked into the, the house where Sassiji lived, you know, so long. And after that, then he said that to develop this uh, memorial, uh, you know, uh, how much money will be required? Immediately, the minister asks like this. But we were not uh, very much uh, clear about the expenditure, you know, that is required for uh, this particular memorial. So we fumbled with uh, some money here. You know? But he said, no, we, I want a world-class memorial, not uh, anything, but world-class. And uh, I hope that uh, one crore rupees will do. And uh, definitely I will sanction one crore rupees. And this will also continue. Um, you know, uh, it will continue as a recurring expenditure. <clears throat> Every year you will get one crore for this memorial. And so this, uh, the, the Anand Kumar, he went back and very quickly he issued, uh, you know, sanction order. Uh, of money uh, for uh, uh, the work to be done in the memorial. And so immediately the CPWD, they took up the, the uh, restoration work, you know, and uh, uh, the, chief, uh, the, 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 the chief engineer and superintending engineer and executive engineer, all of them came to the memorial, they looked into the campus and the house, you know, uh, and, and, and they decided that uh, this work should be uh, done immediately and uh, was given to uh, one executive engineer. He was Mr. Agarwal. I remember his name. Agarwal was there. And uh, so uh, they started this uh, restoration work. And during that time, so I discussed with this Agarwal that while doing the restoration, the layout of the museum should also be prepared uh, by the, the uh, CPWD, you know, because they will, along with the restoration, the, uh, it will be easier for them. To, and so we discussed with this uh, engineer the layout plan of the memorial, you know. And then so uh, there was uh, this, the building was actually uh, uh, it's because it's a Lutian building, you know. There are some, uh, there are some uh, 15, 16 rooms, actually. Some big and some small, like that, 15, 16 rooms. And the barandas on all sides, you know. There are barandas on the front and the back and the side, you know. Barandas. So this is this is very typical uh, Lutian, uh, you know, architecture. And uh, so... Uh, so we decided uh, the, you know, the entry point uh, of the, uh, to, this, to this memorial, you know, from the, uh, uh, the official, from the, from the dr official drawing room, uh, you know, side. And then uh, people can enter by a kind of a corridor, you know, uh, and, it, it can go inside and uh, it can come out uh, by another baranda, you know, uh, and, uh, and some at uh, uh, the back, actually. But if, uh, if that was actually um, a problem for us because the layout of the memorial, you know, uh, needed to be covered all the... Uh, display area and all the period rooms because we have two different uh, uh, displays there. One we call the period rooms, which were the actual rooms kept as it is in the memorial and certain other rooms which were converted into display room by, by, by uh, having some showcases, pedestals, panels, you know, like that. So, and to do this, you know, uh, automatically we have to use uh, uh, all the, the 15 rooms and so to cover all the 15 rooms through the corridor uh, that was not possible 
you know so you were thinking what to do but this man is very clever he has agarwal he said uh, we will open a a passage at a particular place you know and this passage we will cover you know allow us to cover all the 15 rooms the visitors can move from one and uh, from one entrance and you know looking at all the uh, period rooms and the display rooms and then they can uh, come out you know uh, uh, from the back side you know from the back side where and there was a veranda which was again covered covered you know covered into a display room and then so from that room anyone can go out to the lawn and then they can uh, uh, exit you know from the museum building so like this so this is uh, what was done the restoration and the layout of the building has been uh, <clears throat> properly done by the cpwd thanks to uh, their uh, effort uh, the civil and uh, they are still the, the cpwd looks after the maintenance of the this particular building and they are very good at their work so uh, the, when the this the building was ready and then uh the layout as planned by us uh, has been uh, properly done then the, the question of uh, displaying the material because here we have to uh, you know show the simplicity of the man through our display we don't want to a kind of gaudy display you know uh we don't want to dramatize uh anything you know uh we want to be uh, a very simple way of presenting the life of a man who was a simple man by heart simple man by habit you know so uh, that was the challenge you know uh, faced by us and uh, however uh, we took up that challenge and try to present lal bahadur sastri in the memorial his uh, life and strife you know in the memorial by a very simple display uh, method you know so uh according to that we have already as i have already said that we try to keep the the period rooms you know with some of the rooms which were actually used by lal bahadur sastri and his family you know as it is keeping it as it is to, to show to the people that the, the family of the prime minister living in a, a house you know and how simply they live you know that can be seen from these period room and we also try to show his uh, contribution in the nation development his contribution in various manners you know uh, that we wanted to show through the display rooms so the display, display rooms um, for the display rooms we designed uh, with some very very simple showcases you know um and and also these showcases when they were designed we designed in such a manner that the showcases will allow display of a limited number of objects and the remaining objects could be stored you know in the same showcase actually that will, so it is a stored um uh, display uh, showcase or a show cabinet you know so like that we have designed like that and the uh, <clears throat> so that is the uh, the, the very uh, structure uh, we uh, we try to, to do <clears throat> now how to present lal bahadur sasi his uh, uh, contribution to the, the country you know so uh, <clears throat> the materials at our disposal you know uh, which we uh, got it from the that house and also uh, some of the objects were later on donated by the sasti family you know uh, uh, and with, 
from those objects uh, you know we have to uh, present the lal bahadur shastri you know in two parts the first part is the his childhood and his period of his growth you know from a um, child to young man and to a freedom fighter you know that that part we didn't have any objects or any archival material we didn't have photograph of his childhood there was no photograph of childhood in the lal bahadur shastri memory because he he belonged to a very poor family very uh, he they didn't have a a camera to take photographs you know so no photographs in childhood only photographs to that we try to show his early life is a photograph of his old house you know a, a dilapidated house where he lived you know and he the house of his maternal uh, uncle you know where he grew up and uh, the the college where he studied you know a photograph of the college he studied these are the end we have uh the photograph of the jail uh, where he was imprisoned during the freedom movement you know photograph of the jail uh, you know these are the, uh, the the photographs you know which were used um to present uh, the the formative stage of uh, lal bahadur shastri you know but we had uh, enough material you know uh when he became the minister in the nehru cabinet and then we had uh, photographs you know lots of photographs from the uh, information and broadcasting ministry and these photographs you know uh, which were there in the collection were in a very bad shape and then so immediately uh, we wanted to do uh, you know some kind of restoration of this photograph and Uh, fortunately i went to the indira gandhi national center for the arts ignca and uh, i met uh, the sri p jha you know the p jha who is the director of the uh, cultural informatic laboratory in the indira gandhi center the p jha i met p jha and requested him that we have these photographs which are in a very bad shape and uh, we need that these photographs should be digitized uh, so that these photographs can be used by us you know in the memorial and pija was so kind you know uh, he immediately said we will definitely do this work and only thing is that we will keep a copy of the digitized images with us in our archives <clears throat> then i agreed to that so all the photographs uh, were digitized and uh, we are now using the digitized image of the photographs in the memorial and we are also in a position now to allow uh, people to use uh, these types of images you know whenever they ask that if they need some photograph of him we can go give those these types of images because which are there in our um, which we kept in, in the software in our computer so uh, that is one thing uh, the digitization of photograph so this memorial now presents uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri by way of uh, display, uh, you know, of um, artifacts that consist of uh, photographs and a uh, large number of them. We have enough, but uh, the, the photographs, uh, the available photographs are from 1950s to 1966 onward. Uh, of up to, from 1950 to 1966 and we don't have any photograph from 1904 to 1950 uh, you know we don't have any photograph of uh, sastri ji uh, in, <clears throat> so uh, in this uh, memorial uh, we try to show the historic events uh in the life of uh, 
Lal Bahadur Shastri on one way and his contribution in the uh, development and uh, uh, of the nation, you know, uh, and uh, various other uh, contributions uh, that we have seen in, um, in, uh, in, in, in various, uh, uh, you know, um, events uh, that happened in the life of Lal Bahadur the Shastri. So the Shastri Memorial, um, the first, uh, the, the entry point, you know, in the first entry point, you face, uh, you were just first enter, so you face the empty room. This, this empty room uh, is a small room which is kept as it is, you know, uh, and this was a room in which all the secret uh, things were discussed, actually, with the Lalbardo Sastri, you know, whoever comes And this room is significant because in this particular room, Kamraj Nadar, then president of uh, the Congress, you know, uh, All India Congress Committee of the President, he came and he informed Lal Bahadur Shastri about his election as the head of the parliamentary uh, party the, to become the second prime minister of India after the death of uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. <clears throat> so, so a starting point we saw uh, the empty room and then as you pass on, so you have the historic uh, drawing, official drawing room of the Prime Minister. And this room is important because here uh, all the political leaders and VIPs and diplomats used to come and discuss various matters of uh, national importance. First thing, um, the, the most important thing is that Jawaharlal Nehru himself came and sat in this particular uh, room, drawing room, you know, to discuss important matters with Lal Bahadur Shastri. So it's a historic room, the, the, the drawing room or the official sitting room. You know, as you see this room and then you enter the, the, the other parts of the uh, memorial, you know, so you pass on to a corridor and this corridor you will find, uh, you know, the photographs are displayed in uh, certain wooden panels, you know. And these photographs, uh, the, 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 the first lot, gives some idea about uh, his uh, early uh, days, you know. Um, and then, uh, and we don't have any other thing to show. And so automatically you pass on to uh, the next, uh, phase that is when he became the, the minister, railway minister. And then uh, he, he also served as other, uh, in other portfolios, you know, we had all the photographs and these photographs are arranged uh, and shown in the, as you pass through the corridor, you can see these photographs and you uh, get the information about Satish's life and activities. Uh, as uh, as a minister in different portfolios, like he was the railway minister, he was the industries minister, he was uh, um, a shipping and transport minister, he was uh, home minister, like that. And so here I will try to show that uh, his contributions and some of the photographs were very significant in the one of the photographs as a prime minister, you know, he was one of the photographs very significant in this. Yes. The, in the photograph, it is shown that uh, the Lal Bahadur Shastri, as the prime minister, he was delivering speech at Lal Kila you know, on the 15th August, you know. And that day, there was heavy rain, uh, you know, and uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri was speaking, you know, from the dais, you know, without any umbrella. 
he was just uh, soaked in the rain, but he was delivering the speech. Now, this lecture is important because it shows that somebody wanted to uh, give him an umbrella side. Sir, you should uh, take this umbrella, you know, while you speak. No, no. I, will, I don't want this umbrella. But the, the, the audiences who are sitting in, in open, you know, they are drenched in the rain. I don't want an umbrella. I will speak without an umbrella. So he delivered the entire speech, you know, without the umbrella, dance in the rain. So this uh, is an important point. And there are photographs which are very significant, shows with the uh, the, the leaders, you know, of uh, uh, like the Chusheta Kripalani, are like um, photographs with uh, uh, Jakir Hussein or uh, Radha Krishnan, you know, photographs with uh, Nehru. There are several photographs of Jawaharlal Nehru, Abdul Kalam Ajad, like that. So these photographs are vintage, but it, it, it gives very good information about the life and time of Sastiji, you know, uh, from 1950s on, on or to end of the 66 when he, he expired. So the, this, the, this, these photographs are on the corridor. And then while passing through the corridor, uh, there are rooms, you know, and the first, the, uh, the room in the left-hand side, uh, you know, uh, that uh, gives some idea about the developmental work done by Satyaji in his uh, as, a, as, a, as a minister in different departments, you know. So some of the souvenir items, some photographs and some uh, I, uh, things like, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, those are, uh, you know, used for, you know, inauguration of a uh, uh, building or a bridge, you know, things in, uh, and these were being displayed in that room, you know, to show that he was constantly engaged in development work of the country uh, in different capacity, you know, like that. There's one photograph uh, displayed in this particular room, you know, and in that room, uh, in that photograph, you see that he is traveling in a third class compartment, you know, in a third class. The Lord Sastri standing in front of a third class compartment. But the important thing is that Lal Bhadu Sastri later on as a railway minister, he, uh, you know, removed this third class compartment and he made it into a second class compartment, giving some more comfort, like cushion, sitting arrangement, you know, uh, uh, the, and uh, other, certain other facilities, you know, so that people can travel uh, more comfortably, you know, instead of those uh, third class compartment of those days, you know, which was uh, not comfortable for people long journey. So, uh, so this, uh, this, this, the one, this room we tried to show his contribution and, and the other room, we also tried to show uh, the, 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 the foreign relations, you know, uh, that uh, it was there in the time of uh, Sastriji and uh, his, uh, you know, visits, you know, to nearby the countries, especially, you know, um, the, the places like Nepal and, uh, you know, Myanmar and other places. And, you know, there uh, uh, some of the souvenirs, you know, uh, friendly uh, countries they gave to Lal Bahadur Sastri were displayed in this room to show that he also a man of peace and he also tried to uh, create friendship with the uh, various countries, especially the neighboring countries, uh, countries of um, at the time, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, then as you proceed, and then from uh, this time to we uh, now come to the the personal life of uh, the Sastriji from the public life. So you go to the personal life. So there's this, this room, you can find his personalia items, 
in one of the rooms all the personal items were displayed and uh, in this room there are two uh, interesting exhibits and that attracts uh, visitors very much and then one is a woolen coat displayed uh, in a showcase you know is woolen coat and the title uh, or the label in the label it is written this particular coat is worn by two prime ministers of india and so we have given a write up on this so uh, in that write up it is written that the lal bahadur shastri was asked to uh, go to kashmir in winter day you know to solve uh, a problem that pro arose from the uh, hazrat brawl shrine you know the missing of the holy relics in hazrat brawl shrine and people were agitated and so jawaharlal nehru thought that it is the lal bahadur shastri who can solve this problem so he must go uh, to the kashmir and solve this problem lal bahadur shastri was little back and then he asked uh, uh, nehru he asked him what what when you don't want to go no i can go but i don't have a warm cloth with me oh okay okay you wait so nehru said and he went inside and brought this coat and then given it to sachi just take this coat you know so you will be comfortable mm -hmm. so sachi he went there and then with this coat and when he came back he wanted to return this coat to nehru and nehru said no no you keep it it he will require it more right so this particular coat worn by two prime ministers displayed is one of our important uh, exhibit here in this uh, memorial another is uh, a toilet kit you know of lal bahadur shastri and this toilet kit with a uh, aluminum uh, show box and uh, then saving uh, things you know uh, we have uh, uh those um, um, saving shops you know or, and all the very simple very ordinary uh saving kit you know very very ordinary very simple saving kit used by a prime and this saving kit was uh, brought back from tashkent actually after his uh, demise there so we got this uh, these items you know uh, from the, uh, the and what was the family so this was also displayed to show uh, the simplicity of the man you know in the uh, his life uh, not just as a, as a as a minister or as a prime minister or as a political leader he just behaved like a common man all through his life that is that is what we try to recreate uh, in this uh, particular room and from this uh, room another personal room are the, the bedrooms they, there were two bedrooms in such one is for the lalita sasti his wife and the children where la sasti is and other room is for lal bahadur sastri you know and that room is a makeshift room actually it is part of the veranda is enclosed and then a small room created uh, you know with a charpai and all where lal bahadur shastri used to sleep and do his work you know and he used to um, eat and drink you know tea you know in in that room although there is an official drawing room uh, dining room which he never used which is also a uh, on display uh, you know the drawing room uh, as a private room which is for the vips and vips and whoever uh, comes to him and an official purpose and you know at that time it was used but sasti ji never used the, uh, the dining room he used to uh, eat and sleep in his own uh, bedroom so that uh, that that bedroom is kept as it is you know uh, to show the very simplicity of a man even had the helms of affairs of a country he remained as a common man that is the greatness uh and now uh, from this room one can now uh, as we can, can go to a veranda at the back veranda mm -hmm. and from the back veranda one can see uh, the 
car, Fiat car, which was uh, purchased by Lal Bahadur Shastri, you know, by taking a loan from the Punjab National Bank. And the Prime Minister, you know, he didn't have the money to buy take a Fiat car, which was needed for uh, his children to go to school, you know, because he never allowed his children to use government car to go to school or go, you know. So the, 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 their children were insisting that they, they, they are in difficulty in going to school in other places on foot or on uh, auto exos and all, you know. So they need a car. So he, he didn't have the money and he purchased this car uh, by taking loan from the Punjab National Bank, which he could not complete actually return, completely return uh, after his death and that was to remain. And Lilita Sasti has, uh, from her pension, she uh, paid the, the remaining and the balance amount, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is the card, Fiat card, which is still there on display um, in a special set made for it. And uh, people can see from the, the baranda, you know, uh, and also, when they go out from Kenjin, they can see. Mm -hmm. So, from this veranda, Iman can go in to, uh, to a room in which uh, we are again displaying. Now, this is a display room. We're displaying mm -hmm. these citations. The citation. He received many citations. And it's not possible to display all the citations in one space. And we have a number of selected citations who were properly, uh, you know, displayed in this room to show that he was the man of the masses. Because these citations are not from uh, some very, very important people or, you know, some VIP, but these citations are from very, very common men, a school children, a teacher, or a um, a man of uh, you know uh, from um, mm -hmm. at a village you know like that, and these are uh, the, the citations and given by some of the the NGOs, some of the associations, you know, working in the field, working in at the grassroots level, you know. And so these citations were properly displayed, you know, to show that he was a man of the masses. You know, the masses liked him like anything. That is what we tried to project in this particular room. From this room, uh, you can pass on to uh, another uh, room, you know, which is dedicated to... Uh, Lolita Nehri, Nehru, or Lolita Sastri, or the wife of Lal Bahadur Sastri, because Lolita Sastri had a great contribution, you know, in the life of the Lal Bahadur Sastri, and she was the person behind Lal Bahadur Sastri, you know, uh, uh, because she continuously, uh, you know, uh, worked as a shield, you know, uh, in the life of the uh, Lal Bahadur Shasti, because he is not uh, in a part of, or he's not, uh, uh, he didn't have any problem in the home front because it was the Lalita Shasti, you know, who was also a freedom fighter, Lalita Shasti. Mm -hmm. She also did uh, lots of uh, work, you know, uh, in social and cultural development. They were very Bias lady, she had a, a room, you know, uh, for um, prayer room, you know, uh, and where she did, uh, you know, bhajan every evening. But Lal Bhajan, she never attended uh, any of these religious activities, you know, of Lalita uh, Sasti, because he was busy with his work, you know, uh, for the country. So, so this particular room. Uh, where I have, there is a kitchen, you know, which was used by the Sasti herself, 
with all traditional things there and certain other things you know that speaks about the very contribution of lalita sastri in this particular room and from this room uh, you go to another uh, which is actually a veranda a uh, covered veranda and which is uh, a kind of display room showing the 1965 war you know uh, and in that we try to show how courageously lal bahadur shastri you know uh, allowed his army to enter uh, pakistan you know mm-hmm. in this uh, and uh, <clears throat> he said uh, when the generals met lal bahadur shastri and they asked lal bahadur to give us permission to enter pakistan mm-hmm. in the lahore corridor you know because they are giving them a very uh, heavy pressure in the kashmir front because the war was in the kashmir actually where the uh, pakistani army were entering uh, you know the one of the sectors in in the in the kashmir to stop that pressure in so the army general they asked that uh, we must enter pakistan in this particular punjab sector uh, you know and Lal Bahadur mm-hmm. said, "Go ahead." In 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 a minute's time, he said, "Go ahead. You do your work, and I will uh, mm-hmm. see the other uh, thing, political things. I will handle the political thing. You go ahead." And you see, so uh, that was uh, the courage of a prime minister who was considered to be a weak man by uh, his enemies. Mm-hmm. You know. he was a tiny fellow and we will talk that he didn't have the car but he was the most courageous man you know a determined man uh, and that's that is being completely evident in the 1965 war you know so war and after this war uh, so the 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 man who 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 hankers for peace all the time so he went to tuscan Uh, to have peace with pakistan and he did it and he died there you know uh, and uh, but he was being uh, you know in his bed even the enemy you know um, to uh, so the great respect uh, to uh, lal bahadur shastri you know we have some photographs uh, you know showing when carrying the body of the lal bahadur shastri even the the president of the pakistan was there to give the shoulder you know to to carry uh, his body that body you know so we have these photographs in this is the last room and then here we are trying to show the the man who was always simple but very courageous and a determined man you know and who only knows uh, for his integrity and who is only he is the man who is for uh, for peace not he is also a man of peace you know mm-hmm. so all these things uh, we, we just try to uh, develop and then in this photograph you can see that his uh, ashes uh, you know were kept and then it is being displayed there you know that and you see uh, i am because i have uh, for several uh, times i have seen that the visitors when they come to this memorial some of these visitors i have seen them crying <clears throat> looking at uh, certain things of the sastri they said that we need a prime minister today like him you know something like that and a prime minister who was um, kind to all the people in you know, who has um, a man who tried to uh, help everyone and who also lived like uh, <clears throat> a common man you know who lived like a common man and he every day lal bahad shastri you know during his time uh, he used to meet uh, you know the visitors you know in the lawn and uh, in the front actually in the front lawn was you which is a historic group where he used to meet the visitors you know all the visitors were allowed in that room and he personally goes there and meet each 
one of them, talk to them, try to understand their problems in their life. So uh, the, the campus of the uh, memorial uh, also have uh, a number of spaces. One of them is the, this particular lawn, which is historic because he is uh, one to, uh, he, he meets the people, you know, every day uh, to know about their problems and other issues. Then the uh, is, uh, another area is, uh, which is also historic, uh, is a badminton court, which is also kept as it is, you know, badminton court. Because Lal Bahadur Shastri, whenever he gets time, he do some kind of physical work, but he comes and he play badminton with his children and other people. And, you know, that is, uh, he, he, that he shows that he is also concerned about his physical fitness. Then, uh, <clears throat> in the last room, I have forgotten to tell you, in the last room, we have displayed uh, a very important item that is the Bharat Ratna awarded for him, you know, the Bharat Ratna. And so, in this uh, slide, you can see this Bharat Ratna uh, awarded to him. And the medal is kept uh, in safe custody because we don't want to display it uh, uh, in the memorial because of security uh, problem. I mean, also the, mem the, the medal, the Bharat Ratna is not displayed. Only this particular the certificate or the citation, which is being displayed in the last gallery, that you are posthumously awarded Bharat Ratna. So this is uh, uh, <clears throat> briefly about the, the memorial and briefly about the man, uh, you know, which we wanted to project in this uh, in memorial. And I. I don't know that uh, whether we were successful or not, but we have uh, hundreds and thousands of people coming to this memorial here nowadays. And as I told you, the many of these uh, visitors they go out crying, you know, for this uh, person. With this uh, few words, I thank you very much. Uh, Thank you so much, sir, for this insightful lecture. Now, I would like to uh, request Dr. Anand Asutosh Divedi, sir, Director General, Heritage Society, to give his input. Thank you, sir. At the end of this session, Let me extend my vote of thanks to everyone present here. I, on behalf of Heritage Society and our academic collaborator, Museums Association of India, I first would like to express my profound gratitude and sincere thanks to our distinguished speaker, Professor A.K. Das, sir, Director Lal Bahadur Shastri Memorial, New Delhi, former professor of Museology, National Museum Institute, for accepting our kind in invitation and request to interact with our audience despite his busy schedule. Thank you very much, sir. I extremely thankful to you, sir, for delivering such a beautiful and highly important talk on Lal Bahadur Shastri Memorial History and Development and updating us with its collections and how the museum has came forward. I convey my thanks to all the members of the museum, especially you, sir. I also thankful to Dr. Anand Vardhan sir for his introductory remarks and inviting such a great distinguished speaker today. I also thank to our moderator Divyansh ji for handling the two days session beautifully. I also express my vote of thanks to all the members of Heritage Society. My sincere thanks to Chairman, Secretary and all the directors of different departments of Heritage Society and all the fellow members and the staffs of Heritage Society and Museum Association of India for organizing this enriching session. I also thank all followers and all the Virasat Mitra of Heritage Society for their unconditional support and love for our endeavors. Besides all of them, my warm-hearted 
thanks to all the viewers who are live today on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook platforms of Heritage Society. I request you, all of you, to stay tuned with Heritage Society for many more such lectures in coming weeks. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir. With the permission of sir, I would like to ask to close, conclude the session. Sure, please. Please. Thank you, sir. Thank you.